So, Assalamu alaikum students, welcome to lecture number 5 of Advanced Nanomagnetism. In this lecture, we will talk about the super paramagnetic effect we want to uh, learn about super paramagnetism uh, in the nanomaterials. At the atomic level, magnetism can be described through the overlap of electron wave function, as we already understand in the last lectures when talking there. <coughs> taking their spin uh, interaction into account. On the nanoscale, it becomes more difficult to predict the behavior of the magnetic nanoparticles due to the surface effects and the finite size effects. When reducing the size of the magnetic material, the number of domains within the material will be reduced and we only have a single domain for the nanoparticles less than 100 nanometer. In diameter by having only single domains it is possible to produce strong magnetic magnets uh, permanent magnets however if the size is reduced beyond a certain limit the sample becomes super paramagnetic and uh, it behaves like a paramagnetic material while we still uh, we still uh, hold the ferromagnetism within the core the only thing that due to the reduction the thermal fluctuations will be enough to uh, to fluctuate the magnetic movement of the huge core. So ferromagnetic uh, or ferrimagnetic, here is a ferrimagnetic magnetic uh, nanoparticle is represented which is sim will behave similar to ferromagnetic nanoparticles. So nanoparticle consists of ferrimagnetic or ferromagnetic aligned core which behaves similarly to its counterback material and this order surface spins and uh, in the basics of nanomagnetism lecture we already uh, see uh, what are, how the uh, surface spins are different from the core spin. The core behaves similar to the bulk material the, so therefore the disorder surface spins have the different orientation of uh, the spins uh, as compared to the bulk material and at the nano scale uh, due to the increase in surface to volume ratio the surface becomes very important in determining the magnetic properties of the nanoparticles therefore uh, we must uh, understand uh, its uh, dependence so with reduction in the size of the ferromagnetic nanoparticle the single domain nanoparticle cannot be fixed after a certain temperature known as the blocking temperature which is below the tc which means that there is uh, also a dependence of the uh, applied temperature in which we are working. So, if we, uh, so we every every particle, every material has uh, you know, and nanoparticles has a certain temperature below which they behave like a super paramagnetic uh, above which sorry above which they behave like super paramagnetic. And if you decrease the temperature below this temperature, the huge core spin can be blocked in some certain direction. So, in both these blocked and superparamagnetic states are uh, below the TC, we, we are still in the ferromagnetic state of the nanoparticle. And uh, below TB, nanoparticles core magnetic movements is fixed in some anastopic direction, and above TB, it is free to move and uh, we are in the super paramagnetic state. So uh, this is the also a big hurdle in, uh, in for the application of data storage because usually the blocking temp this uh, blocking temperature is uh, well below the room temperature. So for the data storage, we must need need uh, nanoparticles which have to above dB above room temperature so that we can use them. Uh, in data storage and we can block the uh, block the uh, spin in some certain direction so which depends on on the volume of the particle the tb depends upon the volume of the particle and the anisotropy of the particle therefore we need to understand this blocking temperature so below tb we have a block state and above tb we have a super paramagnetic state if the temperature is further increased above the tb we uh, we will have a TC uh, after which uh, the system will go the nanoparticles will fall in the uh, paramagnetic region and the even uh, and then the ferromagnetic alignment within the core destroys and the nanoparticle go in the paramagnetic region. So 
So here is the figure. You can uh, see that uh, with decreasing the particle uh, side, the coercivity is increasing. Uh, if you are moving from uh, right to left, multi-domain to single domain, uh, and then at a certain limit, uh, after reducing uh, a certain grain size limit, we end up in the superparamagnetic uh, region. So therefore, uh, uh, the size of the nanoparticle is very important in determining this magnetic properties. So uh, here uh, you can see we are in the ferromagnetic region and then the single domain region and then we have a superparamagnetic region. So superparamagnetic is a form of magnetism exhibited by small ferromagnetic or ferromagnetic nanoparticles. At sizes of less than 100 nanometers usually the nanoparticles are single domain and all this uh, phenomena or the study is macro spin approximation curve. So when the nanoparticles are small enough, the energy barrier also reduces and the particle can easily uh, change its uh, direction and can surpass this energy barrier. With thermal, uh, enough thermal energy, the, the magnetism can flip uh, direction randomly over short periods of time. And uh, the time between two flips uh, in a direction is called the needle relaxation time. The superparamagnetic state it refers to how the average magnetization of the nanoparticle average to zero when no field is applied. So here is a uh, two well model. As I told you, if uh, uh, the the barrier is uh, high for large particle and the barrier is small for small particles. So this energy barrier changes with the size of the with the size of the nanoparticles. So with in, in the superparamagnetic region, the particle uh, core spin uh, is uh, not fixed in some certain direction, and, we can, uh, and uh, if you want to, and if you want to uh, use them for data storage, we must reduce the temperature below its uh, TB, uh, and then we can use them in the block states. And the one of the important uh, parameter uh, which uh, distinguish it from the block state is the coercivity uh, at the superparamagnetic uh, in the superparamagnetic region the coercivity uh, diminishes and the, we have no coercivity within the system the image loop of the some systems are presented and you can see the paramagnetic uh, image loop and then we have a ferromagnetic image loop the superparamagnetic MH loop is S, S like shape, it's not linear like paramagnetism loop because we still have a ferromagnetic alignment within the uh, core, but we have zero coercivity. So, if you have a uh, super paramagnetic state, you will end up with the S like MH loop with zero coercivity, and in the block state, you will get a uh, MH loop like a ferromagnetic system. So here is example of uh, uh, measured uh, MH loops in the superparamagnetic state and also in the block state, which is the ferromagnetic um, state. So above TB, you will get a superparamagnetic-like MH loop, and below TB, you will get a block state or ferromagnetic state. So block state uh, and superparamagnetic state can be understood by if we reduce the size of the uh, system from multi-domain to single domain, in the single domain we can observe these two phenomena, the block state and the superparamagnetic state. And in the superparamagnetic state, the, uh, you can see the magnetic moment of the core is fluctuating. While if we uh, we can if we less um, the temperature to uh, less than the TB, uh, it will be blocked in some certain direction. So here you can see uh, uh, the blocks, uh, blocked nanoparticles while the um, superparamagnetic nanoparticles uh, their spins are moving in, in the direction. So it can be also explained with the measurement time. If, if we have a measurement time less than the flip time then the uh, its spin will not flip 
and we will have a block state and if our measurement time is too much in which the atom uh, in, the, in which the um, has, uh, spin of the nanoparticle flip um, very much then we have a uh, super paramagnetic state so magnetic blocking can be understood if you understand by the zero field cool um, uh, curve and this we will understand in the coming lecture in this curve uh, we have a two we have a peak we which represent it is between the magnetization and the temperature in the, in the at the peak uh, both the anisotropy energy of the system and the thermal energy are nearly equal below this we are in the block state and above this we are in a super paramagnetic uh, state so uh, below tb uh, the anisotropy energy is sufficient to block the particles in some certain direction and stop direction while above the TB the thermal energy is more than the and stop energy or the thermal energy is dominant and the particle is free to move so this blocking temperature curve can be taken by a magnetometer so here is the example of magamite nanoparticles zero feet field cool curves at uh, 50 Austin and here you can see the, the the curve coming below is a zero field cool curve and the curve which shows a plateau is a field cool curve so at TB these two curves uh, well, take different paths so thank you students I think it's enough for today and uh, wait for the next lecture